are so many different ways to create value, to add value in a marketplace. <laughs> It is Tina with Picture It Personal Finance. I am here to talk with you today about wealth building. I was having a conversation with a client earlier this week and I find that so many people struggle with the ideas of wealth building because to them it's this big complex undertaking and I am here to tell you that it is not that complex. As a matter of fact, I would say that wealth building is broken into two very simple parts. In order to build wealth or become wealthy in your life, you need to A, create value, and B, manage your assets. I'm gonna talk about these ideas from two perspectives. I'm gonna talk about it from the employee perspective that I think most people um, will probably resonate with, and then I'm going to speak about it from the perspective of many of my clients, the entrepreneurial or business owner perspective. So from an employee perspective, if you wanna grow wealth, you need to A, create value. What does that mean? Well, creating value for your typical employee is to get the skills necessary to meet a need in the market space. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, that is actually both the definition for an employee and for a business owner, probably even more so for a business owner. But think about it like this. If you're an employee, your marketplace, the place where you're going to sell your services is going to be a specific industry. You need to understand what are the needs of that industry. A great need right now in America is a great medical community. I mean, honestly, COVID did quite a number on our medical community and there's a lot of turnover in that place right now. So if you were like, hey, I'm an employee and I wanna deliver a service, what is an industry that has a specific need that is well compensated? I would say the medical community. Similarly, if you look at the technology space, there is a huge need for people who are in cloud engineering, for example. So if you're in the tech space and you need to know what is um, a reasonable place to make money, a reasonable place to create value, a reasonable place to meet a need in the marketplace, I would recommend to you go get cloud certifications and better understand what is needed in that engineering space. Talking about it from the business owner perspective, what are you offering people? You know, I am a financial coach. I believe there is a tremendous need for people to better understand their money management. I say all the time, I am in the business of helping people do away with the stress and the anxiety of money. And that's because I help them better understand what's you know, good money management practices, both at home and in their business. And the value in that to me is tremendous. And frankly, the value that my clients get out of it is tremendous as well but I'm not the only one who adds value, right? There are so many different ways to create value, to add value in a marketplace. So pick the one that works for you, pick the one that aligns well with your interests and with your natural skills, and then build up the rest of that so that you can have a really robust offering. When you do that, when you create money with that sort of thinking, sorry, I was going to say when you create value with that sort of thinking, you are, making a way for yourself to receive money. Money always flows in the direction of value. You provide value, people will give you money. Works every time, it's ultimately the crux of how money is made. I like to give the example of Bill Gates with Microsoft. He created such tremendous value by setting a goal to have a computer in every American's home. And honestly, I think his goal might even have been to have the computer in every home in the world, right? He had a very, very audacious goal and he has fulfilled much of that goal already. And in doing that, he provided such tremendous value by letting all the rest of us have computers and computational power. Yes, we paid for that, it was an exchange of our money for the value that he had to offer. But I'm so grateful for it because without all of that, I mean, I'm a Mac user now, but for a very long time, I was a PC user. And without that, I wouldn't have had the ability to produce the content that I enjoy producing and to create my own offers of value to the world. Okay, so I think that I've explained that really well. I guess the only other thing I could say about it is the idea of the entrepreneurial gap. I won't define the entrepreneurial gap in detail because I do have a video on this and I will link that video for you. But recognizing that 
whether you are an employee for a company or whether you are working for your own company, every one of us has the ability to create value or to act in a spirit of entrepreneurialism. When you identify where the needs are, you can meet that gap and ultimately get paid for it. All right, so that was part A of the wealth building equation. Part B is managing your assets. From an employee perspective, that's gonna look like being responsible for the things that you own and being responsible for the money that you make applying it in the right places to increase your security and then eventually to grow your wealth. So this might look like having an emergency savings account and then making investments. Maybe it's putting money away to your 401k or buying a home, buying multiple homes and making sure that those homes are properly managed. When you take your money and you apply it to things that are valuable to you and then you maintain and manage those things well, then again, like I said, wealth is your, it's coming your way. You're building wealth. This is a core element to wealth. And I think that it would be impossible for you to create value and get paid for it and then manage that money well and not become wealthy. And I think if a cat catastrophe happened to you and all of your money was taken away, if you still clung to the concepts of you as a creative person can produce value for other people and get paid for it, you will inevitably become wealthy again. I mean, honestly, I think this is why so many of the people who win these big jackpots in the lottery become poor is because they've never learned how to create value and they've ne or they've never learned how to manage their assets. And therefore, even when they come into money, it ends up flying away from them. They end up losing it all in just a matter of years. And that's because in order to grow wealth, you need those two elements. And then in order to keep wealth, you need those two elements. So again, zeroing in on the managing your assets. Like I said, if you are getting money from an employment position, then investing it and maintaining the things that you own well and being responsible with what you own, that is really important. If you are a business owner, then it's gonna look a little bit different, right? Then you need to also manage the assets of your business, but you have to understand the underpinnings of your business. It is important to stay aware of and apprised of what you're doing. Otherwise, things just kind of become a gamble. I have had so many clients come to me that I help them with their business finances and they're like, I don't know if I can invest in this. I don't know if I can hire this person. I don't know if I should go into this other space. And it feels like a gamble to them. They don't know how to make the decisions. And it's because they haven't learned how to properly manage the finances of their business. So that is a core element. And, and I'll be honest, you guys, you don't have to do it yourself. You can hire other people to do this for you. But if you're gonna go that route, then make sure that you are vetting those people out properly and that you have trust in them. And that is for people that you hire to grow your business, but that is also people you hired it to manage your own investments. I mean, heaven forbid you have a retirement account that you hand over to someone to invest and you haven't vetted them and they end up losing all your money. I mean, don't get me started on the Bernie Madoffs. Like that was a tragedy. Those people, I feel so terrible for them, but they weren't properly vetting the situation and it was a big, you know, turned out very, very poorly for them. All right, guys, I feel like I'm beginning to ramble, so I will just kind of tie it up here for you and put a bow on it. Remember, wealth building is not a hard and complex thing. It really is as simple as two parts. A, creating value, and B, managing your assets. If you can figure those two things out, and it's really not that hard, it's just a matter of asking the right questions and finding the right support, then you are inevitably going to be wealthy. I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.